Today we have a great malicious compliance story all about closing some bathrooms. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, you're so obsessed with how I dress that you're going to involve HR? Alright, let's get a supervisor involved and see how that goes for you. I work at a hospital that doubles as a research institution. Since I'm on the research side, I have to involve lots of other departments. And most people with whom I work with are very chill and understand that I have to beseech them for things to do my job. I'm one of those, she can go a hundred hectares on a single tank of kerosene type of people, and I'm very on top of things for which my coworkers value me. However, the one place where that camaraderie breaks down is with some of the nurses who work in my specific clinic, focusing on one particular disease. Honestly, I've done a good job making most of the nurses like me. I bring them homemade treats sometimes, and I'm always extra friendly and approbative with them. Some of them have their days regardless, and I put up with them. Right after I first started working in that specific clinic, unfortunately one nurse in particular, let's call her Ben Chell, had decided that I was on her blacklist. Ben Chell hates doing work. She's like a kid playing Xbox when their parent asks them for help with groceries. She'll moan and groan and if she helps at all, it's with an angsty indignation. I needed a series of blood tubes drawn in clinic for a patient one morning, instead of down in phlebotomy, protocol rules. More complicated and stupid than it's worth getting into here. And Ben Chell was the only nurse available. She was extremely put off at my asking her to draw this protocol kit. Despite my giving advance notice to the clinic that this needed to be done, she clearly did not want to leave her computer, which was not open to anything work-related. But she begrudgingly went and drew the tubes. She was unnecessarily profusely thanked by me just for doing her dang job. I came down later to get a prescription signed for another patient, and a different nurse asked me what I'd done to upset Ben Chell, because she'd apparently been going off about me to anyone who would listen. I explained what had happened. The other nurse informed me that Ben Chell was ticked at me and also felt my outfit, a white medical coat, a modest blouse, work pants, and high heel boots, was too provocative. What? I just decided to let it go and try to avoid Ben Chell as much as possible. This did not work. I kept running into situations where the other nurses were busy seeing patients. I was forced to walk back into the nurse triage room, which is off limits to patients, and ask Ben Chell to draw two more of these blood kits in the next month. She was never happy to see me, and she was always wasting her time on her work computer when I entered the room. Maybe two or three days after the last kit draw, my supervisor called me in her office to discuss my presentation. She very nicely, and with pity in her voice, told me she'd received a report about my dress habits in patient-facing spaces. She said she personally hadn't noticed anything, no crap, but was obligated to discuss this with me anyhow. I assured her I had no idea what she was talking about. I thought about confronting Ben Chell, but decided not to because, you know, loose cannon and whatnot. After a brief reminder of the dress code, I figured that at least it was over. It was not over. Two weeks later, and I hadn't even asked anyone to draw any kits in the interim, a formal report was filed against me for my conduct in clinic. This went to the hospital, and then my supervisor, who, even after reading the report, seemed totally clueless about what it could mean. I explained what had been happening with Ben Chell, but then my supervisor told me a second person had reported this as well, on the same day as who was obviously Ben Chell. This time, it was a patient. This patient had reported that I was dressing improperly for a patient-facing environment. Whoa, 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 whoa. I asserted that I wasn't. But I was nonetheless put on probation, which meant that my supervisor, against her will, now had to come with me when I saw patients in clinic for the foreseeable future. And a nurse manager would have to accompany both of us when she was free since I was dressing provocatively in patient-facing spaces and that was her domain. But as you can likely guess from her browsing habits, Ben Shell was not the sort of person who needed more supervisors in her area. Q malicious compliance. Fine. You want to punish me and force me to work in the eyesight of the supervisors? Alright. Let's get some supervisors down here as quickly as possible. My next in-clinic patient came in two days, and it was one of those stupid timed in-clinic protocol kit visits, which meant I was forced to ask one of the nurses to draw the patient's blood. I informed my supervisor and we set off down for the clinic. 
The nurse manager was in that day, so she accompanied the two of us. We all went back into the triage room so that I could ask for help with the blood draw. Benchel and one other nurse were there. What we saw upon entering was the other nurse entering vital signs for a patient into our health database. And Benchel, sitting at her desk with an online clothing retailer open on one monitor and Facebook on the other. I asked for Benchel's help drawing the kit and she sighed heavily and spun around to see two higher-ups looking on with disdain at her work computer. In embarrassment, she swiveled back and closed those two tabs, which revealed, you can't make this stuff up, a website for marital aids that had been open in another tab, about which Benchel had clearly forgotten until now. I just smiled and handed her the bag like nothing had happened. In the hall, my supervisor and the nurse manager were talking about Benchel's display just now. Apparently, she'd been previously warned about goofing off at work. The nurse manager told the supervisor that she was going to check all of Benchel's work computer activity, which I actually didn't know any supervisor could readily access. What followed was so incredibly beautiful that I hope it made the ending of this long, long post worth waiting for. According to the nurse, who had initially asked me what I'd done to upset Benchel, her activity was searched. She was revealed to have been spending hours upon hours every day browsing the web, shopping, and using social media. Since she had previously been warned about this behavior, she was given a formal write-up. But this was just the beginning. The day after the three of us went down to clinic, my supervisor called me in her office again. She told me that Ben Shell had fabricated the patient complaint about me and posted it from her work computer. How did they learn this? Oh, that would be because she saved a draft of the message that reported me to the hospital. And she'd accessed the patient complaint and comment webpage the same day. My supervisor sincerely apologized for the hassle and told me I was no longer on probation. As for Ben Shell, apparently fearing the worst, she put her two weeks notice in the same day after getting wind that she was in some far more serious trouble. For reasons I will never understand as long as I live, the hospital chose to let her quit after two weeks instead of firing her on the spot. Maybe they knew what a nightmare she was and were comfortable letting her quit on her own accord? It's not as though she was due to glean any glowing references from this experience. Maybe they just wanted some extra work. Our clinic was very short-staffed for nurses at the time. In any case, they chose not to fire her and let her quit on her own. On Ben Shell's last day, I ventured down to the triage room to retrieve some outside records from the printer. When I entered, Ben Shell was alone and browsing glass door. I unbuttoned my white coat and told her, Hey, good luck with your next job. I hope the employees are less provocative. She slowly spun around with a scowl on her face. Then I lifted my dress up to my neck, flashed her my bare chest, and walked out. And I never saw Ben Shell again. Well, I guess you could definitely say that OP gave them something to remember them by. I don't think even after everything that it was necessarily called for to do that, but hey, I understand being totally pissed off at this person who tried to backstab you and get you in hot water. I mean, even after everything, the fallout wasn't bad for them and they were still doing the same thing if they're on glass door there. I especially love that in this situation, she's the boy who cried wolf, so she can't go and say, OP was doing all this stuff and acting provocatively. They're not gonna believe them, right? This next story is, want me to close the bathrooms? Okay then. While I was in college, I worked as a janitor for a pretty busy cafe. It wasn't very fun, not that being a janitor would be anyway, and the boss was pretty bad at his job, but it made the money I needed. This cafe was in a pretty rural area, and we had the only public restrooms for about three miles. Everyone in the community knew where the other restrooms were, but it would still be an inconvenience to drive to them, even if it wouldn't take more than a few minutes. To use those restrooms, you needed to buy something, but almost everyone who entered bought something, so it wasn't a huge deal. Now, since I was in college, my work hours had to be fit around my college classes. For how my boss was with everything else, he was quite understanding when it came to this, mostly because he could only find other college students to hire. With the way my schedule worked, I always had to leave at closing to get to my classes on time. So I did my cleaning during operational hours, 
Most of this was in the bathrooms, and I would leave it open while cleaning each stall and occasionally the floor. Why close the only bathroom for miles? Nobody complained. Nobody saw it as an issue. That is, until a cold Wednesday in January. I was about four months into the job and was into the routine by now. Boss calls me into his office before I left for the day. He tells me, Mr. OP, I received a complaint about your bathroom cleaning procedures. One of our customers slipped on a puddle in the bathroom yesterday. I said, is she okay? She's okay. She braced herself against the sink. I said, that's good. It must have been an unfortunate accident. I always put a warning sign in front of any puddles in the bathroom while I'm cleaning them. Well, clearly it's not enough. If you're cleaning the bathrooms, keep them closed. I say, close them completely? And don't reopen them until you're completely done cleaning. This customer was known for being a prolific spender, and boss only saw a big pile of money going into flames if he didn't listen to her. So he did, and I complied. Close the bathrooms completely? Okay then. The next day I enter the cafe, a few hours after opening due to classes, and start with the bathrooms. They weren't too dirty, but I thought they… well, needed a very deep clean. So deep of a clean, it would take me the rest of the day to clean it up, as opposed to about an hour or two. After all, boss never said how fast I should clean them. Whenever a customer wanted to use the restroom, I would just say that I was ordered by boss to keep it closed so I can clean. And after an hour, I made a closed sign for both bathrooms with some small text in the bottom saying, On the orders of the boss. Needless to say, things went south. Over the day, numerous people complained to boss about the closed bathrooms. Boss said he had no choice. It was for safety. Those people, knowing full well I gave adequate signage to any slippery areas, were, understandably, very confused and very angry. Luckily, the other public bathrooms were only a short drive away, but it was still a decent inconvenience for some. A few people decided that this was the last straw and boss's incompetent management. The old owners who recently sold the place were amazing, from what I heard, and were never coming back to the cafe ever again. By the end of the day, boss called me into his office. Mr. OP, you can reopen the bathrooms tomorrow. While the business didn't completely crumble, Boss lost some very loyal customers that day, and his reputation took a tumble. I've heard a bit from the past few years, and the pandemic combined with his further incompetence meant that the cafe was shuttered. I mean, to be fair, if I went into a public restroom and somebody was in there with a mop or was cleaning a stall, I would feel like maybe a tad uncomfortable going into one stall and using it. But to be fair, I try to avoid any public restrooms altogether. And if it was a situation where you can't help it, I'd rather them be in there cleaning and have it open than closed for really no reason at all, other than the floor might be wet. Our next story is, actually, it does matter. As a teen, I worked in a restaurant and was the only one there on night shift that knew how to change the towel machine. Saturday night, peak business, and the ladies room machine needed changed. Okay. The hostess was supposed to redirect traffic over to the restrooms on the bar, while 17 year old me changed it. I'm halfway through, and somehow, a woman made it inside the restroom. As she headed to the stall, I cleared my voice and said, You may want to use the other ladies room, or wait till I finish. Because of my long hair from the back, she thought I was a woman. She apologized and scooted out fast. It could have had a different ending had she screamed. I did point out to the hostess after I finished that she slacked on her job. And no, they never taught a woman how to change the machine when I was there. I take it back, I guess in some situations it does actually matter if you lock the door. I mean, to be fair, if it is like a private restroom, as in like a one-on-one, -on -one, and it's especially a ladies room, or like a tight space, it definitely would matter if you walked in there and there was just a man in there. Our next story is 4 weeks notice versus 2. Provided over 2 weeks notice for a transfer, but that wasn't good enough for my boss. She needed longer. Despite me not doing anything, one of my many reasons for wanting to leave the role, ask her what she needs for me in that extended period, no response. Luckily I work from home, so mouse jiggler and will be doing whatever I want for that time, and responding if she or someone else reaches out when I get to it. So over their BS, so mad because I could actually be doing work to help my new team, but current manager refuses to allow that. 
I actually have a lot of respect for OP being so frustrated here because a lot of people in a situation where they're like, you need to give us a longer notice and is essentially just going to have to sit around and play around on the computer would be like, yeah, this is great. Get some extra time just to screw around and get paid for it and then I finally go off to an actual job. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.